So we will continue our discussion. Uh, there are one or two verses that we normally chant at the beginning of any class on Yoga Sutra. The first one is, as I mentioned earlier, is a tribute to Patanjali himself. Padena Vacham. <coughs> so, that's how I mean. Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham, Malam Sari Rasija Vaidegena. Yopakarottam Pravaram Muninam Padanchalim Pranchali Ranatosmi. This is one verse that we have, you may hear me chanting every day. So it's better to every session so you can better understand the meaning of this. So Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham Malam Sari Rasija Vaidegena Yopakarottam Pravaram Muninam Padanchalim Pranchali Ranatosmi. So, the main statement here is Patanjali Anathosmi. I bow down to the great sage Patanjali, who is the author of Yoga Sutras. Now, the verse tells us something about what he did, his contribution to different areas of knowledge. He removed the impurities of mind, speech, and body. That's the essence of this particular verse. That is, malam means impurity. So, by writing these Yoga Sutras, he uh, presented before us a mechanism, a set of uh, spiritual practices that will help us to remove the impurities of the mind. That's what we discussed last time, you know, yoga ka chitta vritti nirodha. So this chitta vritti is the malam, the impurity of mind. Vritti is, as I mentioned earlier, emotions and feelings, attitudes, different, different conflicting thought currents that emerge in our mind that frequently stand in the way of our spiritual life, that creates conflicts, that causes procrastinations, postponing duties and obligations, makes, us, makes it impossible for us to face challenges ahead of us. So these uh, mental attitudes are the result of previous actions, thoughts, words and uh, ideas that may emerge in the mind so they constitute the malam, the impurity what is to be removed from the mind so yoga helps us to do that so it's an excellent, it's a very wonderful uh, set of practices that help us to retain our mental balance, mental health it's a science of mental health. Then, Vajam Malam means the impurity of speech. Padajili wrote the most magnificent, the most voluminous interpretative work on uh, Sanskrit language, Sanskrit grammar, syntax, pronunciation, that is phonetics. Rasadi, in fact, it's called Mahabhashyam, I mean the great commentary, that's literal translation. The great commentary on, on the original work, that is the Bible of Sanskrit grammar, it's called Panini Sutras. So that is the second contribution that Padanjali made, I mean, to purify speech, how to use language properly in such a way that it doesn't create any agitation in our mind or in the minds of the listeners. So language and speech have a unique spiritual dimension. It is not just a vehicle, not an instrument for communication or for just stating an idea. It has got a higher purpose 
a higher dimension if if you utter a word properly if you use language properly it brings in a kind of inner refinement inner tranquility and peace and also to the listener so patanjali uh, in fact created the most elaborate uh, scientific work on sanskrit grammar in fact if you of course this is not within the scope of our discussion in fact the world the, the i mean the, the the volumes of sanskrit grammatical literature is so huge and it teaches just a, it is the scope of an entire lifetime to study uh, sanskrit grammar especially patanjali's mahabhashya it is considered to be a unique work of course if you should be willing to spend your whole lifetime right from at least 6th or 7th year till maybe you die when you are 100 years it is practically there are in india there used to be no there are quite not too many but still there are those who dedicate their entire life just for its own sake so that's a second contribution he made you know yogena chittasya padena vacham malam malam means impurity so your chittasya malam the the impurities of mind and vacham malam the impurities of speech so yogena chittasya padena vacham malam sharirasya vaidhegena yopa kurutam pravaram muniram yaha apagaro so and of course he did something else he also wrote a commentary on susruta sutras which is an important work in the indian school of medicine ayurveda so he devised a plan a scheme he elaborate he elaborately devised a scientific plan to purify mind body and speech so this is one verse the second verse is a tribute to the the triple uh the, the trio of yoga tradition stuve padanjali vyasam shankaram cha munitrayam tatra sutrasya bhashyasya kramat vivaranasya cha so i go down to this uh, holy trio this holy trio constituted three sages three sages three great philosophers uh who uh who are the celebrated authorities and writers uh, who are the great acharyas what do you call the great ancient masters of yoga tradition first one is patanjali himself who wrote sutram patanjali yoga sutras which he did of course to purify the mind that is patanjali apart from his contribution to grammar and ayurveda he also wrote the sutras in the sutras has not the most significant work of patanjali some of you who may be studying yoga sutra yoga studios you may think that patanjali's greatest work is yoga sutra actually you be somewhat disappointed that is his most insignificant work that doesn't show the the, the insignificance of that work that only shows the greatness of other works because he's uh, uh commentary on susuda sutras and mahabhashya which is supposed to be the greatest of his work contributions the next great figure that comes in the tradition is vyasa today if you are discussing yoga sutras today we are if you are discussing yoga psychology yoga philosophy we are indebted to vyasa who wrote the first and the most elaborate commentary on yoga sutras so when we speak about yoga sutras as we did last time last time we discussed you know the kshiptam moodham vikshiptam ekagra niruddham the five states of human mind we discussed in fact these ideas do not come from patanjali they were interpreted properly by vyasa in his commentary it is vyasa who actually elaborated the psychological the philosophical the practical aspects of yoga sutra literature the third figure that comes in the succession of the holy trio in the padanjala system is shankaracharya himself the greatest of indian uh, 
philosophers, the greatest of Indian saints and philosophers. And he wrote a Vivarana. Vivarana means actually it is a sub-commentary on Vyasa's commentary on Yoga Sutras. So, Katra Sutrasya Bhashisya Kramat Vivaranasya. So, the Sutragara means the author of the Sutras, potentially. Bhashikara means in the context of Yoga system, Vyasa, Vyasa's commentary. And Vivarana is a sub commentary uh, of Padanjala system following the footsteps of Vyasa's commentary. So, this is. This is what we have to keep in mind, these two verses we will chant every time when we discuss the subject. So I discuss this second sutra which is, which is maybe the most important sutra in the, in, in the Samadhi Pada. So I won't repeat again what I said earlier. Uh, there are four chapters that is Samadhi Pada, Sadhana Pada, Vibhuti Pada and Kaivalya Pada. This is the chronolo chronology, the order of chapters in any printed work that you buy from any bookstore. Now, in actual spiritual practice, uh, it should be slightly different. The first is Sadhana Pada because it deals with practices. The second should be Vibhuti Pada because it deals with the results, the powers, the consequences, the effects of these practices. The third is concentration, Samadhi, that is the third stage. And of course the fourth chapter is always the same, Kaivalya Pada, the chapter that deals with emancipation or spiritual enlightenment. But uh, we will discuss uh, uh, in, uh, slightly differently because the first 14 sutras of Samadhi Pada deals with, uh, it deals with some of the important uh, introductory ideas to yoga system. For example, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirotha. This is a definition. This, this is a definition of yoga. What is yoga? Chitta Vritti Nirotha. Nirotha has got two meanings. One is transcending. Secondly, cessation. How do we transcend? First, we try to restrain, control uh, the negativity uh, which, uh, which is constituted by ideas, emotions and feelings that frequently stand in our way of our spiritual life. Not only spiritual life, and that is something very important. Padanjali system, strictly speaking, is not a spiritual classic. Don't be shocked when I make this statement. Because Padanjali himself was not talking about God realization. He is not speaking about the realizing Brahman, Atman or anything. Pad Padanjali system is philosophically allied to Sankhya system, which is at best an agnostic system. Some people will call it even atheistic. So it is very secular. That is an important point people should remember. Of many of the mantras that you may utter in the yoga studios or elsewhere, I do not know about you. But they are all very important because the, those mantras contain very great ideas, no doubt. But Padanjali system, Padanjali Sutra doesn't ask you to go to a temple or church or a synagogue or any place of worship and pray to some god sitting somewhere asking for prayers, asking for solving your problems. Not at all. It actually helps you to solve your problem yourself. Try to analyze your mind, your thoughts, your feelings, your ideas and you find that it is so secular. In the sense, it is not anti-spiritual. But I mean to say, it is not the religious in the conventional sense. Because religion has got a very bad name frequently. That religion is not responsible. When we talk about religion, we talk about a god, some kind of a hulk, huge muscular man with a big stick on his hands, totally uncompromising, absolutely not willing to listen to your, your appeal, you know, he just do's and don'ts and he threatens you if you just don't listen to him. 
and he um, he will promise paradise or what be still worse if you obey him. Now this sort of thing you don't find in Patanjali system. That is something very interesting. So uh, yogasanas teach you to stand on your head, but Patanjali helps you to stand on your feet spiritually. I mean, it helps you to uh, understand yourself, to analyze your mind. So chitta vritti nidotha. This is the essence of yoga. Once we reach the niruddha state, and I mean, you see the fifth state of um, uh, uh, fifth, uh, the, the most exalted state of mental condition, that is niruddha state. We have to remember what I stated earlier to fully remember, uh, understand this. In the introduction, last session, I mentioned the five states of human mind. Kshipta state and Mudha state. Kshipta state, you, 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 you are restless but you are somewhat dumb, uh, inactive and Mudha state. In Mudha state, the dumbness is more manifest. In Kshipta state, restlessness is more manifest. But both are uh, states of some kind of abnormality. So in Mudha state, you are totally dumb but restless. In Kshipta state, you are restless and totally unstable in your mental condition. The third state is Vikshipta state, where you suddenly get a lot of peace of mind. They get Vyasa's analysis. A lot of peace of mind when you listen to Yoga Sutra lectures, maybe, when you pray, when you meditate, when you read a wonderful book, when you do something in a very satisfactory manner. You feel a great joy and a kind of inner tranquility and peace. Uh, but after some time, this is gone. Again, of course, you may re regain and re-experience the same tranquility when you come to be under society or a, if you are visiting a church or a synagogue or any place of worship for the matter. You feel the same joy. But again, you get back to your home when you are in the factory, when you are in the workplace, when you are facing the daily challenges and obligations. Again, mind uh, forgets the spiritual um, uh, values that you enjoyed in a talk. And again, mind goes back to previous state. So it's like a pendulum, as I mentioned. It moves from one end of the slope to the other end. It's called Vikshiptam state. Vikshiptam manaha. The fourth state is Ekagram, when mind gets concentrated. It is no more waver, it is no more wavering, it is no more shaking, it is steady and stable. <coughs> there is concentration, there is a focus of all vrittis in one direction. And when you, have con you, when you are concentrated on something completely, you feel a great relaxation, that's because <coughs> you are not aware of any conflicting thought currents because there is one-sidedness that is ekagram. Agra means the sharp end of a of an instrument is called is agra means end sharp end of maybe of a, of a spear. Ega means one, so it is not blunt. It is sharp, one-sided, one-pointed. That is ekagra state. The fifth state is what is indicated here, Niruddha state. In Niruddha state, you are not, 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 not only you are not troubled by your vrittis, but you are in such a state of mental tranquility that vrittis can no longer trouble you, disturb you. They are in a Niruddha state. That means you have, they have ceased to exist but you have transcended uh, the state of being disturbed by vrittis. So in the coming sutras you find it's like it's like seeds which are burnt or cooked. Now if you have got seeds and uh, if the soil is fertile you plant the seed it becomes a a plant, a tree, but suppose you you fry the seed or you cook the seed 
and then you put in a soil it doesn't become a plant it doesn't become a tree because its ability to evolve further or to manifest again uh, has ceased to exist so all the vrittis and vasanas and samskaras in our mind become uh, become like cooked or burnt seeds it's called dagdha bija vad padanjali uses that term dagdha means uh, fully burnt a seed that is fully burnt so that is called yoga ka chitta vritti nirodhaka so the purpose of yoga is to reach that state of cessation of vrittis vasanas and sam- samskaras which are ne- which are uh, which are uh, disturbing you now when i use the word all waves all the vrittis cease to exist we should remember when when we pra- when we do a practice well uh, padanjali ji yoga sutra can be broadly called a spiritual practice because spirituality in the higher sense it goes beyond uh, the idea of a god the idea of a religion so in that broader sense padanjali yoga sutra literature can be called a spiritual literature in a very broad sense so when you talk about uh, going beyond uh, uh, be- beyond the vrittis uh, we are actually implying we are going beyond all disturbing vrittis all all negativity now what are the negativities which comes next tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam so that third sutra will help you to understand uh the uh, um, i mean the more elaborate uh, implications of the second sutra tada I mean then when you reach a point when your transcendent vrittis at that state what happens then the drast the drastuhu swarupe avasthana drashta means see experience the person all of us in a way called drashtas not in the vedantic sense the word drashta uh, has an entirely different meaning in vedanta philosophy advaita philosophy please don't associate the two here all of us drashtu swarupa what is our swarupa means our true nature what is our true nature our true nature is that we are not disturbed actually this impurities of the mind that uh, uh, padanjali talks about in yogena chittasya malam means padanjali wrote yoga sutras to remove impurities these impurities are not a natural uh, natural aspect of our mind they are foreign bodies they are like alien so and in the case of a disturbed mind that disturbing aspect is something alien that is something foreign in fact he- healthy mindedness is a natural state anything that makes it unhealthy is alien is foreign just as you know when we get something alien something that is not uh, that is something foreign to our body's nature then we fall sick when something disturbs our mind we become anxious we become worried we become unnecessarily without any reason we become anxious that worry that cause of worry is not our true nature it is alien to our true nature and this should be understood we are actually getting back to our own true nature that is swarupa tada means when you reach that state of nirodha vritti that is you know yoga ka chitta vritti nirodha when we reach the point of the, that cessation of the vrittis vasanas samskaras etc then what happens you know we actually uh, come back to our own spiritual home we actually re- regain our true mental condition that is the implication here now in this context when does it happened when vrittis go away 
Now, how do vrittis emerge the mind? Well, if you spend just ten minutes watching the internet, the TV, uh, you see, you know, the the visual image, which is becomes an audio, which is an audio aspect. Also, you hear something, and you see something. and our mind identifies with what we see and hear and actually we are uh, live we are creating an entirely different alien world in our mind when we watch something which catches our eye which infatuates our mind and when our mind is trapped when our mind is caught by the influence of what we see and then you find after some time what we saw what we heard and what we felt what we thought when we uh, saw those images on the computer screen will come back to our mind the computer you have closed this could happen uh, even after several years whatever we consciously experience at the audio visual level and also at the level of other senses of perception like the sense of touch sense of smell sense of taste all these will create a vritti and when vrittis are created they come back to us that's why when you read a very when you just watch a thriller and go to meditate next after immediately what will happen you know you feel a great pull to come out of the meditation room you you feel a great force is dragging you away from the the seat on which you are sitting but so many thoughts conflicting thoughts can come no this need not be an experience that we have had recently patanjali system tells you and that is very important to remember uh certain memories certain impressions certain experiences that emerge in our mental world may be coming from previous life cycles so patanjali system buddhi like buddhism and other mainstream hinduism they all believe in the principle of reincarnation what we call rebirth and the law of karma so when you get uh, when a memory a vritti comes to your mind emerges in the mind which is very concrete when you see it it should be coming from the present life but when the same vritti takes the form of an abstract idea then without form then it is coming from previous life so this is of course this is this is the this is a principle that buddhism also has articulated elaborately in different buddhist you know, lingavadara sutra and all that you know vigyana vadi is well known this textbooks you find so uh, impressions and feelings and vrittis that emerge in the mind that uh, that do not have any physical aspect about it. they are coming from previous life cycles when they have visible form and con- concrete visible uh, a gross dimension then they are coming from this life if you have if you have had an experience when you are ch- when you are children you may regain that experience when they come back to your mind along along with that impression the visual form and what you heard maybe 40 years back you may here again not with the external ears but at the mental level mentally we can hear and that's a very important thing to remember when you listen to a music uh, in the morning and you didn't write down in the evening you recite it when you recite again you are hearing again what the musician music teacher taught you in the morning when you hear it again again when you explain a, a sight a visual experience that had that you had in the morning 
you are actually living again through that experience in the evening and this could happen even after several years so that is from this life so vritti is is a very important subject in vedanta vritti is become samskaras so many vrittis they together become a tendency and samskaras become vasanas vasanas is an aptitude a child a child may have a tendency in drawing for singing one explanation could be that his father or mother is a music teacher then it is obvious but suppose a child in a family uh, which which had absolutely no musical um, um, uh, musical tradition and didn't live in the neighborhood of musicians and never listened to any music it could happen a child becomes a prodigy in music some kind of an obsession obsessive interest that means the child is bringing with that with her with him uh, or with her uh, uh, certain vrittis from some previous life cycles it is again a manifestation of vrittis vasana samskaras etc so that's why in the you in the vyasa's uh, comment is a vritti samskara chakram this is an important term to understand to enter the world of patanjali yoga sutras vrittis constitute the effect of the effect that is retained in mental world, mental system even after the experience is over samskara is a tendency vasana it becomes an aptitude sankalpa means thought currents again following the same samskaras and sankalpas and you re- you repeat that action again see the, again so when you repeat an action more vrittis identical vrittis are created so it becomes a a, a circle now uh, of course here uh, potentially as uh, as has he has analyzed uh, the way this creates problems in our mind so he talks he talks about uh, nine Uh, obstacles which i mentioned the last time but so i won't repeat again antaraya is called so uh, these vrittis can create stumbling blocks in the mental world when we are able to uh, stop these vrittis when we are able to restrain these vrittis when we are able to transcend these vrittis then what happens you know then we come back to our true nature our swarupa so that is the beginning of the third sutra we should remember that very well okay now the fourth sutra tells us prutti sarupyam idaratra now uh, suppose you don't try to understand this and you don't try to practice you don't try to do the yoga practice to restrain this vrittis what happens you know you identify yourself with everything you see you hear you touch you smell and you taste all the five senses of the mind will drag sorry all the five senses of a personality will drag the mind to us their respective sense objects all the time that there is a interesting uh, a, a, a analogy in the, in in the uh, well known work called viveka chudamani by shankaracharya so uh, you see how the vritti sarupa midaratra how we identify ourselves with every sense object and every sense experience and how it creates problems so there, there is a sloka i say you know shabda dibhi panja bireva panja panjatma mapasu gunena baddhaha kuranga madanga padanga meenaha bhringa nara panja biranchitakkin shankaracharya in the vega chudamani is a small book uh, it is relatively an introductory work on vedanta says he gives the example 
I mean, how mind is trapped, how the mind is dragged by sense objects, and how we lose our uh, true identity. And he gives the example of five members from the animal world, animal kingdom. Kuranga, Madanga, Padanga, Meena, Bhringa. So first the example of the deer. You know. The deers in ancient days, they used to hide in... Now also of course they hide in bushes or maybe in the caves and the hunter will play some kind of a primitive musical instrument and hearing this music the deer will come out and it will be shot by an arrow. An archer will kill that deer and so what happens you know the sense of hearing becomes the trap for the deer. Now, in the case of elephant, elephants, they move in groups, in herds, and they touch each other for mutual protection. And so they are not very careful about the path they are walking. And then they may fall in a pit, and they are trapped, they are enslaved, and may be killed. So the sense of touch, because they touch each other, becomes the death trap for the elephant. Now, padanga, padanga moths is some tiny insects that emerge uh, maybe in, this may be more true in the tropical countries you know so you start a blazing fire to kill to, to attract these insects and so that they will die so seeing this blazing fire the the sense of sight draws these moths towards the blazing fire and they are killed they are burnt then, mean, I mean fish, sense of taste, they eat a bait and they're killed and they're eaten. And of course then, uh, bringa, some sort of tiny insects or creatures that move about in, in the flower garden, enjoying the smell of flowers, and they're again caught and killed by other animals or creatures. So sense of sight, sense of hearing, sense of taste, sense of smell, sense of touch, all the five senses of perception become dead traps. Then Shankaracharya exclaims, Nara Panja Bhiranchitakim. In the case of human beings, you know, what happens? Every moment we are trapped, our mind is trapped by the five senses. In the case of animals, uh, they are primitive by nature, so only one sense is prominent. That's enough to lead them to their death. But in the case of human beings, these vrittis, millions of these vrittis are getting stored up in the mental world, mental system. So, in the, in the definition, uh, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodhaka, great commentators like uh, Vajaspati Misra, Vijnana Bhikshu and others, they insist that Chittam doesn't mean mind alone, it means the memory system, it means the sense of identity, it also means uh, our, our speculative faculty, all these are implied in the word Chittam. So the mental world as a whole is implied by the word Chittam. So, Millions of these vrittis are getting stored. Now we cannot uh, take one after another. We cannot do that. It's just like a lake. It's like a lake. There are different layers of dust, dirt, filth and so on. There is some pure water on the surface of the lake. If you want to clean up the lake, you have to take a big pole and then you have to stir and remove the dirt. But in that process, a lot of terrible things, dust and dirt and filth and bacteria will emerge and you have to remove them from the lake. That's why when we sit for meditation, immediately the mind gets disturbed. When you're watching the TV, when you're watching com a comic uh, a, a, a program, a comedy, there's no problem. You're watching football or you're watching sports, mind is very peaceful. The moment you try to meditate, 
immediately mind rewards because meditation is an attempt in fact to purify the lake so you are taking a big pour and immediately uh, mind feels this agitation so padanjali device uh, has devised a, a very interesting very psychologically very perfect a uh, very scientific uh, plan to uh, clean up our mind not one after another in fact something very interesting i can give one example i mean the scientific the rational approach of patanjali that that will can be see for example he says suppose a person is uh, obsessive you know obsessive psychosis you know is obsessed with the idea of making money and he he may have trillions of dollars still uh, he wants to make more money you heard of the story a poor man uh, got a treasure uh, so he was walking uh, near a tree and there was a ghost living on that tree and he the poor innocent man you know he just sat under the tree and prayed who are may be here let him listen i want a lot of money so the ghost living on that tree came down and he offered to this poor man i shall give you a few few just full of gold coins 10 15 20 you know this the stories come in the katha sri sagara panchatantra so many different versions so i shall give you so many chests full of gold coins seven or 10 or maybe and you take home and he was very happy and immediately he found in front of him so many chests full of gold coins one chest was almost full so if you can somehow put a few more gold coins it will be complete so nine chest were full the tenth one would be full if you can somehow collect 10 more coins and then be full so this man took the whole treasure to his home from that time onwards he directed all his efforts and energies to make enough gold coins to fill that chest this man was employed by the king in the court so the king was watching he would have been happy to give him a pay a pay rise you know but what happened you know the king did not know that this fellow was trapped by the ghost so slowly he became very weak because he was starving he was saving money by starving by denying food to his own children he neglected his own health care because he wanted to collect five more coins so that the tenth chest will be full and eventually he became so poor that he he began starving and he began uh, begging in the streets this how the story goes so what happened is called the obsession now pratipaksha bhavana padanjali makes an interesting point pratipaksha bhavana means when you are caught and trapped by any such obsessive feeling which frequently happens you know then you think about the dangers of greed how uh, how tragic was the fate of many people who who were greedy who spent their whole lifetime to collect money and wealth what a tragedy if we go on thinking of this you know then the vrittis that force you to go after money and wealth the greed will be reduced so every obsessive vritti every vritti as a counter vritti you can neutralize the negative effect of every negative vritti i am just giving one example and of course he gives a lot of uh, examples of abhyasa and vairagya sense of renunciation and 
repeated practice of certain disciplines that we discuss in the coming sessions so vrutsa vrutti sarupya midaratra if you don't try to restrain the vrutis then what happens you know every pa- passing object every passing experience will become a trap will become a uh, will become uh, will ensnare us so that's why ether yoga asmin kali bhojana means a very interesting guy just quoting one you know bhoja bhoja wrote the film, well known book rajya martanda in that book he says yoga anyasmin kali that means that's what he says means what is itaratra otherwise itaratra in sanskrit means otherwise if we don't practice yoga if we don't try to practice your vritti what happens you know what happens you become totally identified with every single every passing idea every minute every passing idea every experience contains in it this trap once we understand this what happens you know we are able to uh, avoid that trap in the yoga system the question arises what's the use of learning yoga sutras if a person really listens to yoga sutra lectures and understands and asks it properly i can assure you whenever whenever there is some kind of an anxiety problem a problem of anxiety irrational anxiety worry or complaint sometimes you know people feel everything is coming to dead end you don't know what to do how to move if you remember many of these ideas in the yoga sutras that you will understand this is the nature of human mind once you understand that this is a nature of human mind then you won't be frightened by this i give the example of driving and traffic problem when you drive and when you know 10 miles ahead there's a traffic delay then and when you reach that point then you are not shocked oh we will handle that so once we understand this is how mind works this is how vritti is operates then this vrittis this agitating vrittis and samskaras will have will be a lesser problem won't be able to disturb our mind we will know this is the nature of human mind of course now we will have interactions you are most welcome to ask questions uh, discussion will be very helpful for understanding some of the practical implications of many of these ideas pranam swami ji yeah so i have a question regarding dream experiences as they relate to vritti right in in some other classes you have mentioned that you cannot have a dream that is untied to a real experience right which is the vritti is manifesting in some way uh, so so in a way we could say that dreams also tell us a little bit about our real personality but we have both desirable and undesirable dreams yeah so what is your advice on how we should approach our dream experiences yeah you know we prepare the ground for our dreams you know dreams are nothing but re-expressions we are reliving reliving re-experiencing what we are experiencing in waking state not exactly but differently more subtle mental level so uh, to feed I, i mentioned this earlier to feed our mind with more and more positive things uh, that's one way uh, to have I mean to avoid unpleasant dreams. This is a better way to put it. So how do we generate vrittis? And that's what Padanjali system insists on. That is the value of learning Padanjali system. Um, you see, he, he, I, I give this example. Uh, Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, Ubay, Kshanam. You know, there's a sutra that begins like this, you know. Punya, uh, Punya, Vishayanam, you know. Uh, so you can have 
peace of mind padanjali uses chitta prasada for chitta prasada for mental tranquility we should exercise certain disciplines now uh, he gives the example of everybody's everyday life we you meet or you experience different types of persons and events in our everyday life some people are extremely good some people are also good but they are not able to help us in some ways and uh, some events are very promising very desirable some experiences some events that we witness may not be very helpful so you find a variety of events in persons and situations every person encounters in everyday life now there patanjali says maitri so there are people who are more or less like you interested in spiritual life interested in the spiritual disciplines which patanjali talks about you know so you should try to uh, associate uh, with those persons when you associate with people who are spiritual seekers like us it's not that when i am a spiritual seeker no you should not be choosy or exclusive no that's not what is meant by that it is simple common sense it is simple common sense i don't mean to say you should you should be hierarchical or you should you you you, you should you should uh, categorize people you should be judgmental not at all that's not what i'm talking about a simple common sense that we all want to practice so that we will be able to live a peaceful life and others also will be able to live a peaceful life that's what the implication so uh, try to associate with people whose association will help you in your spiritual life so this is my three karuna means sympathy my three means friendship so patanjali's language is in a very brief so my three karuna mudida upekshana this is how he peoples the language karuna means sympathy suppose there are people in your office or in any place they uh, they ask you questions you go to with under society you go to any holy spiritual place and uh, do you know any of these things and that person may not have had any uh, any access any idea of any of these ideas that you have already uh, experienced so you should not look down upon him you should have a very sympathetic friendly attitude towards him that is called you know karuna mudida i mean suddenly you may come across somebody who is much more advanced you should be happy if we can be happy when we find people who are ahead of us if you can appreciate uh, qualities in others that we don't have ourselves then those qualities will no naturally uh, develop in our mind what we admire in others those qualities you find slowly we will develop that's why you know small children uh, in their homes you know the children who are interested in soccer or football or any game, they will get some pictures or photos of the heroes of that particular game they will have on the table now that they they may uh, they may be aspiring to become uh, a sportsman themselves so what we admire in others that we become if we can admire great and good qualities in other people we should be happy that's the literal meaning mudita means we should be happy we should have we should be happy we should appreciate uh, we should not have any negative feeling or jealousy or envy when we find people who are superior to us who are in every way more qualified not that we should uh, we, we we should be submissive or anything but we naturally brought minded appreciation of goodness good qualities in other people now next the third the fourth category upeksha you know there are people whose association could actually cast doubts 
in your mind can shake your own convictions can make you skeptical cynical this is very dangerous thing actually there are many people whose association can pour cold water on your own mind already you may be interested in some spiritual ideas you may be uh, practicing something you may have developed an in, uh, a great interest in certain things suppose you associate with certain people uh, you should not hate them but uh, you should keep mentally you should keep some distance so it's called a filtering mechanism you every day you can live with them but in your mind you should say well i, I i'm okay but uh, i have a different idea so that helps you to Evolve, to evolve, to develop a filtering mechanism, so that you won't be affected uh, by by wrong association with people who can have a disturbing influence on you. Now, in fact, Patanjali has exhausted all possible categories of people, associations, and events in this sutra. It's very interesting. those who are like us and those who are not as advanced as me as us and those who are more advanced and those who are neither advanced nor not advanced you can say but if you talk to them for some time you start thinking well after all why should i worry about the yoga sutra vedanta spirituality why should i suddenly if you are a beginner you are more likely to be impacted influenced by negative ideas so you should not fight and quarrel with them at the same time you should not be very friendly with them so keep a distance not physically maybe sometimes you know every day we may have to deal with such people you can't fight with them and you can't keep away from them physically of course but mentally you should have a, a defensive mechanism in your mind no this is this is the see how rational it is this is very interesting uh, so that is the system is so scientific and so rational and so psychological the fact, yeah i should come to complete the concept of samskaras is a unique contribution of padanjali padanjali's system to the world modern psychology doesn't have anything uh, comparable to the concept of some star as expounded by vyasa in his commentary this is a very unique explanation if you correctly understand you find you know it could be a very sound logical explanation for uh, obsessive psychosis and for multiple personalities problems and also certain problems like uh, Uh, you know this uh, uh, this uh, the delusions of grandeur all can be uh, 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 can be explained in the light of this vyasa's concept of samskaras yeah swami ji this is all very rational yeah swami swami ji can you hear me yeah so it's all very rational and logical But sometimes with logic and this thing, we still um, don't go ahead. Then we feel at that time a prayer, yeah. a prayer to what, whatever the wish they have, or whatever they ask. Yeah. That still gives us a lot of solace. Yeah, right. You are right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, totally yeah. discounting God. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Now remember, uh, I'm I'm happy that you you just uh, um, you. Took up this subject. I'm happy, so I, I get it. I get an opportunity to clarify the points. You know, mm-hmm. if we study Ashtanga Yoga, Yama and Yama, etc. You know, that uh, Yama and Yama Asana Pranayama Pratyahara Dharana Dhyana Samadhi mm-hmm. Ashtanga Yoga analysis, and there is Ishvara Pranidhana Dwa. This sutra in the Patanjali system, the so, Ishvara or God is not denied. What I wanted to say, emphasize was uh, frequently. people do have a wrong feeling that patanjali system is some kind of a religious uh, thing it is religious it is part of hindu heritage hindu tradition no doubt about it but what i mean to say 
in many ways it is so uh, secular because patanjali himself Patanj patanjali system itself is not is totally different from any devotion philosophy at the same time prayer meditation resignation to god you know ishara pranidhana dwa is an important sutra is there that is also one way to experience chitta prasad mental purity if you can you know prapatti is called sharanagati uh, in fact i i'm going to discuss this when i discuss the first sutra tapaswadhyaya ishara pranidhana nani kriya yoga the first sutra of sadhana pada will come then i will try to explain that sutra deals with bhakti yoga karma yoga and uh, jnana yoga these three yogas are implied in the uh, in the sutra the first sutra of sadhana pada that is tapaswadhyaya ishara pranidhana nani kriya yoga kriya yoga according to patanjali system is totally different from whatever you hear kriya yoga is is a is a is a important is is a stepping stone to spiritual life for any person be, who believes in god in any religious tradition kriya yoga is the door the entrance into spiritual life and that is the first sutra of the sadhana pada we will discuss the subject so prayer <laughs> meditation prapatti sharanagadi in fact i will anu ullisi sankalpaka pradi ullisi vardhanam rashi sridhi vishwasa gopthrutu varanam tatha atma nikshepa karpanne shambhida sharanagadi according to ramanuja system this is the system these are the six characteristics of true surrender to god that idea also comes in the in the exposition of uh, kriya yoga and also in the sutra ishara pranidhana va or by the resigning uh, resigning everything to god that's the meaning we'll come to that thank, thank you for raising thank you. Yeah. thank you so much there is a question from uh, youtube yeah uh, so this is from subhash jawaharani says how are klesha and dvesha connected to our samskaras okay excuse me raga and dvesha what is klesha and dvesha uh, how are they connected yeah you know klesha you know panch klesha i explained here avidya smid raga dvesha bhinivesha klesha it comes in the sadhana pada we'll take up that the subject is coming but anyway i'll mention you know raga and dvesha are examples of pleasures raga and dvesha are examples of pleasures so the sutra is avidya asmida raga dvesha abhinivesha klesha this is sutra in this sutra pad now uh, raga and dvesha there are two opposites two sides of the same coin uh, extreme obsessive attraction towards something is raga and equally obsessive hatred or aversion towards something is dvesha at empirical level just like you know a coin which cannot exist with only with only one side so every expression of raga has its opposite dvesha at the at, at the empirical level so these are again the results of prutis more or less modern psych psychiatry and psychology agree with this point you know some inexplicable or imaginary feeling of hatred towards somebody towards something towards some kind of an experience which is obsessive which a person may be aware of is this is totally ridiculous still wants to get out of it but cannot get out of it that is actually dvesha and then raga uh, it has two aspects one is infatuation the other one is addiction both are implied in the 
raga. Infatuation means your people have a special liking for certain food, certain things like that. And then they have a liking, but they know it's not so good. They want to get out of it. Still, they cannot get out of it. There's an element of helplessness in it. It is also one aspect of raga. Both these are explained in the coming sutras you find. When we take up the sutra, we'll discuss the subject. Swamiji, my name is Aarti. Um, just uh, I have uh, some thoughts are crossing my mind. So we have learned like four sutras, right? So I was like, how do I uh, apply or like, uh, you know, kind of practice this? Uh, is there like a, a how? I'm, I'm just thinking how to apply every day or, uh, you know, as we progress. Um, yeah. Uh, any any ideas or any thoughts? yeah I, I, as as we proceed further you know there are 195 sutras uh-huh. and, and some sutras are very very elaborate will take several days to explain these are relatively simple because these are all definitions more or less these are definitions first 14 sutras more or less are simple sutras of samadhi Bada. in fact we will come back to them again when we take up samadhi Bada proper after 14 sutras of Samadhi Pada, we'll actually begin with Sadhana Pada. That's a natural way. But anyway, I should mention. So once you understand the, the, the mystery of human mind, especially vrittis, you know, then you'll be able to, able to e- explain some of your own thought currents. So some of the disturbing thought currents become less disturbing. Once you understand the psychological rational explanation behind it, that is one advantage. Understanding human mind, the yoga way, is a great help for uh, remaining mentally healthy all the time. You, you, if you develop a second personality. See, the one personality is the what you are right now. Then another personality emerges. Well equipped with these new ideas. So you'll be able to analyze your own mind. And when anger, hatred, likes and dislikes, or anxieties and worries, when these emerge in our mind, uh, if we know some of the Yoga Sutra teachings, you'll be able to get a, uh, you'll be able to look at them, analyze them, understand them, and react to them and escape the negative impact of any of this. That's an advantage of Yoga Sutta. So as we proceed further, you will get a clearer picture of how to apply this, you know, mental life. Thank you, Swami. Thank you. Swamiji, this is Mark. Um, I have a question from our last session. Yeah. Um, you were talking about, or you gave an example of uh, the witness yeah. or being a witness. Yeah. And you said that an actor in a play cannot witness his own performance, yeah. uh, but the audience can. And I, I wrote to you about this, and you said you were. Uh, Describing the degree of attachment attained after realizing the state mentioned in the third sutra of the Samadhi Pada. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, could you elaborate on on uh, yeah. what exactly the connection is yeah. between the, yeah. the the witness and yeah. that uh, that sutra? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know. Uh, the word, the Sanskrit word for witness, uh, for the, it's will be defined by a great Vedanti called Payadi Ekshida. The name is Sakshi, is a Sanskrit word that you may have heard. Sakshi, no? sakshi means Sakshi, Bodhrutva, Audasi, Nitva, Sakshi, this is a definition. See, you, you are aware of it, but you are not involved in it. So, just like drama, you know. You are, you are witnessing the drama on the stage, so you are aware of what is going on the stage, but you are not an actor, you are not involved in it. 
Now, like that, if we can observe our own mind when it becomes angry, anxious, worried, then you find the anger, the worry, the anxiety will go down. That's called you are objectifying. You are objectifying your own emotions. And you, so to objectify, you have to detach yourself from your emotions. But what did you know? In Patanjali says, Vrti Sarupi Midharatra. If you don't practice, then you are not able to objectify yourself. You identify with it. You and anger become one. You and anxiety become one. You and worry become one. That's what happens Itaratra. Otherwise, if we don't study, if we don't apply the Yoga Sutra method. If we apply Yoga Sutra method, then what happens, you know, this Tada Dashtu Surubi Avasthana. Then, we will be able to remain ourselves at the state of witness, eh? our own real nature. So, you are able to detach yourself from your anger. Then anger becomes less, less disturbing. You can happen, see, in ordinary life, sometimes we come across people who are very mature. Be, very mature, not necessarily educated people. Education frequently makes people less mature, unfortunately. The kind of education, unfortunately, that we find today, because a lot of pressure, lot of anxiety, a lot of drugs also, because to reduce the pressure. So it creates a lot of problems. I'm not going to those details. What happened, you know, a different kind of maturity, when you become really adult in your attitude, behavior, pattern, etc., when you find certain people, oh, you are anxious, don't worry if you come away. You find people talking like that. Just common sense wisdom. Sometimes you find people who are not necessarily with PhDs or anything, but people with some better common sense, a more mature outlook towards life, a more developed attitude towards world and life as a whole, if you talk to them, I have this problem, that problem, you may say, oh, it is part of life. It's okay, fine. Actually, they are applying the same mechanism, partly, because they are trying to objectify, they are detached, they, they are asking, you should detach yourself. It's part of life means, again, you are de-identifying. Instead of identifying, you are de-identifying. You are detaching yourself from your anger. And you find it's gone down. That's what happens. A child who, a little child who cries coming from the field and is, uh, he, he, he is beaten by his, another child, you know. And the mother consoles, oh, it doesn't matter, you are children. He, this natural, your children, your playing is happy. The child, you know, he's happy now. His, his worry is gone, fear is gone. So, like that, you find a maturity. This kind of pure common sense is what I am talking about. In fact, that's what happens when you study Yoga Sutra. The pure, raw common sense that we all have, but frequently, uh, the education, modern education, modern ways of life, suppress our natural, uh, instinctive common sense, which we are born with. So Yoga Sutra helps you to bring it out. That's an advantage of Yoga Sutra. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. It seems that we're only so, psychiatrist. Hello? I think the analysis is like that of a psychiatrist, the whole uh, thing. You are a, you're, you're a doctor. <laughs> you are <laughs> yourself a doctor. Very, very happy to have a doctor in the audience. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, you can make your contribution in, a, in the course of this day. Swamiji, basically, uh, to summarize what you said, so if you are angry, you kind of step back. Why am I angry? You know, there is no need. And like that, you just step back and think about it and then the anger goes away. Is that what kind of you are suggesting, yeah. right? Yeah, it happens in our everyday life. If you take a pill, a medicine for the anger, then along with that, your ability to become angry is gone. So, a damage is done to your mental system. 
But when somebody tells you there's no point in getting angry for every little thing, it's part of life. This happens to everyone. Then your mind is not damaged. That's what it means. So, so anyway, it's a very unique system. Uh, Patanjali system is so unique and so... The, you know, the, that's why I mentioned to you, uh, it is not necessarily what you call a religious text. It is part of Hindu spiritual heritage, no doubt. It is one of the uh, Astila Darsanas, one of the theistic systems of philosophy. But it has got such a wider, uh, higher appeal uh, and uh, much greater possibilities than um, just a book on devotion. I don't mean to say devotion is less or inferior, don't imply that. But I mean, people sometimes uh, are a bit reluctant to uh, take seriously anything that you call a religious text. That is, that is the problem of our times, not the problem of religion as a whole, you know. <laughs> okay, right side, yeah. yeah. Well, there's one more question from YouTube, yeah. uh, from Meena S. Yes. So you can overcome fears by practicing yoga. Uh, does it work through more relaxation of mind and understanding the nature of fear and reasoning? Yeah, we will come to the, in the Yama Niyama, uh, you know, Ahimsa Satya Ste Brahma Sarya Abhirigraga Shauja Sandosha Tapasva Adhyayi Supunithana. These two constitute, Yamas and Niyamas constitute the basis of Ashtanga Yoga. We will discuss the subject again. So, if a person practices yamas and niyamas, then naturally it's a stage-by-stage, stage, step step-by-step uh, practice of disciplines. Uh, again, what happens, you know, we all may become angry, but we will be able to become aware of the fact that we are becoming angry. When we, we, when we become angry, and also when we are aware of the fact that we are becoming angry, then our anger will not be so uh, will not be so disturbing. We we become worried, but we also become aware of the fact we are becoming worried, and that 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 also implies that there is no point in getting worried. That common sense comes. Then worry becomes less. So this applies to. Uh, worries, problems, fears and all that. Uh, when we discuss this uh, um, yamas and the yamas dealing with Ashtanga Yoga, these things will come. Yeah. So we shall conclude. Thank you for the questions because your questions help me to explain more of what I have just touched, uh, just uh, briefly discussed earlier. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Hi Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu